Hello, welcome to this lecture. My name is Diaz Amano, a second year medical student at Shanghai Medical College, Purdue University. Today, in this lecture, we'll be doing refractory period. So let's get started. Before we talk about absolute refractory and relative refractory, we first must know the literal definition of refractory period. So what is a refractory period? Refractory period is a period of time during which a cell is incapable of repeating an action potential. So let's write that down. So, is a period of time in which action potential can't be repeated. That means in this, the lecture that we looked, um, the, the lecture before this, the action potential lecture, in this diagram, some in some sections, the action potential cannot be repeated. And this is due to the voltage gated sodium ion channels. Why is it due to the voltage gated sodium ion channels? Because they are the ones who control the depolarization of the cell, right? If there's an influx of sodium ions, it would make the membrane potential more positive. So that's how action potential starts, right? So voltage gated sodium ion channels are the ones that are responsible for massive or rapid depolarization. So let's write that down. Now, in the lecture that we looked, the action potential lecture, this was the diagram that I drew for threshold, right? And I drew that this was that ligand gated uh, channel where the neurotransmitter can bind to the ligand, allowing small influx of sodium ions to reach the threshold, which is minus 55, right? And this, I said that this is that sodium ion channels and I drew two gates and I said, I'll explain these two gates in the next lecture, which is the refractory period. So now let's redraw this and explain what these gates are. So suppose, this is the sodium, voltage gated sodium ion channel. There are two gates. One of them is called an activation gate, and the other one is called an inactivation gate. So that means there can be three types of voltage gated, or three states of voltage gated sodium ion channels. One of them where it's the activation gate is closed. This is called the rest phase. So this sodium will just get a sodium ion channel is at rest. This, so let's write that. This is at rest, where the activation gate is closed. Now, let's redraw. Redraw this. There's another state, obviously, where the activation gate opens, right? The activation gate opens, right? So this, we can call it as activated state and the last one the last one we can say that the gate which faces inside the cell uh, in the intercellular space that can close too because it's a gate right that can close too and we can say that this is called an inactivated state and this is where actually uh absolute refractory period and relative refractory period comes in so we can say that this is inactivated so there are three states of the voltage gated sodium ion channels. One of them where it's at rest, where the activated the activation gate is closed. The other one is the activated state where the activation gate is open. And the other one is where it's inactivated, where the inactivated gate is closed. Actually, before we move on, where, where each one of them is present in the action potential uh, graph, first let's label these gates. Let's see where these each individual state of these voltage gated sodium ion channels are present and where is exactly the absolute refractory period and the relative refractory period. So for the rest, the I mean the rest rested state of the voltage gated sodium ion channels is present right here, right? The activation gate is closed. That means that the membrane potential did not reach its threshold. And that means this is the time where it's for that ligand gated ion channels, right? Where there was that small influx of sodium ions so that it can reach the threshold. So this area right here, this area right here, we could say that this is the rested voltage gated sodium ion channels. So look, I drew the rested state of that voltage gated sodium ion channel. So now we know that once the membrane potential reaches minus 55 millivolts, it's when action potential starts, right? And we know that that causes that 
actually happens because of the opening of the voltage gated sodium ion channels. And that is the reason of that upstroke of the depolarization. So we can label this section of the action potential where the sodium voltage gated sodium ion channels, the activation gate is open. So this is a state where it's activated. Once it reaches the peak, which is around plus 40 millivolts, is when the voltage gated sodium ion channels closes, right? And it's where voltage gated potassium ion channels open for repolarization. Now, when it closes, it does not close the activation gate, it actually closes the inactivation gate. So just bear with me here. We can label this area as the sodium ion channels where the inactivation gate is closed, okay? Where the inactivation gate is closed. So now, absolute refractory period. Absolute means something which is certain, right? Something which can't change. And we know that refractory period is a period where actual potential can't be uh, restarted, right? So we can say that, we can say that this section, right here that I'm drawing is the absolute refractory period. Why? Because when it's depolarizing, all of the voltage gated sodium ion channels are open, right? Because there are nodes of Ranvier along the axon, only certain areas are where it can conduct, right? All of them are already open. You can't open more um, voltage gated sodium ion channels. That means that is fully saturated, right? All of them are fully saturated, so you can't restart a new action potential. So it makes sense that this is this region we can call it as an absolute refractory period. Obviously, this would be an absolute refractory period too, because voltage uh, action potential can't restart because the inactivated gate is closed. So during depolarization and repolarization is where it is absolute refractory period. So let's write that down. And I already wrote down here below that absolute refractive period is a period of time where actual potential can't be repeated due to all the activated, all of the activated voltage gated sodium ion channels are being saturated, meaning all of them are being used, right? All of the doors are being used for the sodium ion channels to enter the cell during depolarization, right? During depolarization and the inactivated state, the inactivated state of the channels during repolarization, right? during repolarization. So that is the absolute refractory period. Now I'll redraw this diagram and I'll explain what is the relative refractory period. Now for relative refractory period, I took this table from Wikipedia. You could see that the voltage gated sodium ion channels, they reset, meaning the reset, meaning it goes back into the rest pos position where the activation gate is closed and the inactivated gate is open again. They reset at somewhere around minus 70 and minus 75 millivolts. So it's somewhere around here where uh, it would reset, it would go back into its resting stage. And you could see when it's repolarizing and when it goes to hyperpolarization, when it reaches minus 70 to minus 75, the gate targets state. So it's just inactivated or it goes to deactivation. So deactivation is basically the rest state. So at minus 70 to 75 is when those voltage gated sodium ion channels, the inactivated gate opens and the uh, activation gate closes. So that's basically the rest state again. It goes back to the rest state at exactly at this point. So that's why when I was explaining um, absolute refractory period, I, I drew the circle only around here. And if you're wondering why I did not uh, extend the purple line here, it's because we know that for absolute refractive period is when action potential can't start, right? It can start here. That's why I did not draw the purple line um, below the threshold, okay? I hope you understand. I hope you understand that. I did not draw it below the purple line because it can action potential can start here, okay? Because it's in the rest state. So at minus 70 is when the voltage gated sodium ion channels, it goes back into the rest state. And the membrane potential is negative. Now we'll explain why it's called relative refractory period. So let's first 
label that during this time, the voltage gated cell ion channels resets or it becomes resting. Now, why is it called relative refractory period? So let's draw this area as our relative refractory period. Relative refractory period means actual potential is possible, but it's basically, it can't start because the membrane potential is below the resting membrane potential, right? Which is minus 70 millivolts. Meaning for actual potential start, which is possible because so voltage gated solar ion channels are at its red state, right? So if there is enough uh, depolarization up to minus 55 millivolts when it reaches the threshold, it can start, action potential can start. But it's not possible because for this area, it's below the resting membrane potential, meaning there must be so, the, the signal or the stimulus must be so strong for the multiple ligand gated um, sodium ion channels to open so that it can reach the threshold. If the stimulus is strong enough, that means the ligand gated uh, ion channels can open for the influx of sodium ions to reach the threshold and that it can activate this voltage gated sodium ion channels. In theory, that's possible, but it's very, very difficult or you need a very, very strong stimulus. So that's why it's called a re relative refractory period. It's, it's a period where the membrane potential is below the resting membrane potential, making it almost impossible for action potential to start because it requires a very strong stimulus to make the membrane potential to reach the threshold. So I wrote down here that the relative refractory period is the interval of time dur during which a second action potential can be initiated. It can be initiated due to uh, the voltage gated sodium ion channels returning back to its rest state. But the initiation will require a greater stimulus than before since the membrane potential is more negative than the resting membrane potential. Okay, I explained that <laughs> clearly. I hope you understood what is relative refractory period. So let's just summarize what uh, we learned in this lecture. We learned that refractory period is a period during which a cell is incapable of repeating an action potential. And we learned that voltage gated channels so that we get voltage gated sodium ion channels are responsible for rapid depolarization, right? And there are three states, which is the rest, activated, and inactivated state. The rest state is when the activation gate is closed. I don't know why I wrote D here. Uh, and the activated gate is when the activation gate is open, right? The activation gate is open, and an in inactivated state is when the inactivated gate is closed, right? So these are the three states of the voltage gated sodium ion channels and we saw that in our action potential diagram i gave each scenario where these three states are when it's reaching the threshold it's closed right when it's depolarizing it's open and when it's repolarizing the inactivation gate the inactivation gate is closed and i wrote that it's a period of time where action potential can't be repeated due to activation voltage gated sodium ion channels are being saturated during depolarization. All of them are being used. All of them are open. So you can't reuse um, an activated voltage gated sodium ion channels, right? So because it's, all of them are being saturated, literally because of the nodes of Ranvier across the axon, there's only a few voltage gated sodium ion channels. So all of them are already saturated. And also due to the inactivated state of the channels during repolarization. So that is absolute refractory period. Action potential is impossible. For a relative refractory period is when um, action potential is possible, but you, it requires a greater than normal stimulus. And I explained the table here is an interval of time during which a second action potential can be initiated. But initiation will require a greater stimulus than before since the memory potential is more negative than the resting memory potential. So that was the lecture for refractory period. I hope this lecture helped you. And if you have any questions, you can just DM me on my Instagram page. Bye-bye.